Hey everyone, in this episode, I'm going to show you how to set up respawns for your trees. So I have set up my trees to respawn every 10 seconds, which means about now the first set of respawns has locked in, and in a few more seconds they'll come back. There we go, 10 more seconds, and we will have the next set. There we go. All right, let's dive right in. So we are currently removing the instance in the third person character. I'm going to move that over to the tree spawner, which is holding the PCG graph. And I'm going to do that with a function. I'll call it remove tree. This function is going to take the same inputs as this remove instance and that is the instance static mesh component object reference and an integer. I'll call the instance static mesh component ISM, instance static mesh component object reference and a integer, integer. All right, let's go ahead and hook that up. So we are currently using the hit component. We can also use the hit actor. So if the actor is a BP underscore tree spawner, we will call remove tree and we'll pass in the instance static mesh component as well as the hit item. Organize that a tiny bit, compile, save, and now we are done with this. Back under the blueprints. What I'm going to do is add some PCG point data to this blueprint that I will then pass back into the PCG graph. So from the instance static mesh, I will get transform, get instance transform of this instance. And I want it to be in world space because PCG data saves in world space. And from the out instance transform, I'm going to make PCG point. And I only am going to worry about the transform. And on this PCG point I'm going to add to an array. The array I'm going to make a variable. I will call this ism points. Hook that up. And now I want to remove the point. So I'll call remove instance and plug the instance index and let's Organize this a tiny bit as well. Nearly there. All right, good enough. Compile and save. So now that we have these ISM points, we need a way to pull this into the tree spawner, and we can do that with a PCG blueprint. So back under tree chopping, I'm going to make a blueprint. The type will be PCG blueprint element. Select that and bpcg underscore get ISM points. Open that up, and I'm going to override the execute function. I can remove this parent, and first I'm going to find the tree spawner. To do that, I can get context. I will get original component, which will return the PCG that this thing's being called out of, which in this case is going to be this PCG component on the tree spawner. And then from there, I can get owner, which is going to be the tree spawner. 
and then I can cast to bp underscore tree spawner, hook that up, and as tree spawner, I need to get the points. I'm going to build myself a function to get these points. And let's build the rest of this. I'm going to have a collection here. And the collection I'm going to add to collection some PCG point data, PCG data object reference. So I need to have the tree spawner give me PCG data. So let's do that. Add a function, get ISM points. These ISM points, I'm going to need to pass them in to a PCG point data variable. So let's create one now, ISM point data, type will be PCG point data object reference, hook that up, set points on this, and the points I'm setting are the ISM points right here, and the output, I'm going to return PCG point data. And I'll drop ISM point data in there, hook that up. And now back in get ISM points. Let's come out and save this. Get ISM points. And now I can pass the points data into the collection, and I have my instance static mesh points. Compile and save. Oh, and on this I need to add an in tag, so I'm going to make an array on in tags and just leave it blank. Compile, save, and there we go. Back in tree spawner, I'll just drag get ISM points in here. And you can see that the input and output are gray. They're type any. Let's correct that. Back under the PCG blueprint class defaults, I'm going to uncheck default in and out pin, and I'm going to add an out pin allow types point and label will be output. Compile and save and back in tree spawner we have our points. Alright, let's try this out. Right click play, remove a few points, and back under the PCG. Let's see if we get any data. Force regen, We do not seem to be seeing any data, so let's stop playing and see what's happened. And this is what's happened. Accessed none trying to read property ISM point data. So back in tree spawner, this ISM point data is throwing an error, and that's because we need to actually create it. So under the construction script, I'm going to construct object from class. The class will be PCG point data, and I'm going to set ISM point data to this object. Compile and save, and let's try this again. Right click play, remove a few of these trees, back under tree spawner, let's inspect, and we have some points. We might be able to debug them even. Let's change the debug to a little bit larger, absolute 2, and there we go. It did respawn these trees when we refreshed the graph, but that's fine. There we go, more trees, and trees in this case have not respawned because the graph didn't detect any changes to this data, and so the data remained cached. Okay, so let's add tree respawning. Back under tree spawner, let's stop this. I'm going to add a new function, respawn trees, and this function is going to be pretty straightforward, at least to start. 
I'm just going to call generate on this PCG and I'm going to select force. Hook that up, compile, save, and now let's add a way to call this. Under third person character, let's just use jump. I'm going to get actor of class. The class is going to be tree spawner. I'm going to call respawn trees. So whenever I jump, the trees should respawn. Compile save. Let's play this. Take a few out, jump. So they only respawned the first time. So that seems to happen when the graph already starts generated. So let me go ahead and clean up this graph. And just to make sure it doesn't generate in the editor anymore, I'm going to uncheck regenerate PCG volume in editor. So now if I right click and play, I have some trees, I can remove some trees, and if I jump, they don't do that initial refresh. But as you can see, they're not actually refreshing. So I think what's happening is the graph doesn't realize that the instant static meshes have been directly modified, so it doesn't realize it needs to refresh and spawn the meshes again. Well, to fix that for now, I can add in execute console command. And the console command is going to be pcg.flush cache. Compile and save this. Right click play here. Remove a few trees and jump, and they are back. Okay, so right now I could set up a timer and say every 15 minutes the trees would respawn, but then if you, you know, deleted a tree at 1459 and immediately respawned, that would be pretty silly. So we need to have the ability to store the trees and then later have them respawn. So ideally, you know, uh, 15 minutes passes by, we save this batch of trees, and then 15 minutes later the entire batch of trees respawns, and then any trees removed in that next 15 minute period will go in the next wave. So for that, we already are almost there. Just grab this transform points, add a difference in it, and hook the difference up to this get ISM points. And hook that up to the static mesh spawner. And we'll change it to binary and save, and now if we do this, the trees shouldn't respawn at all because we're saving all the points and differencing them. And there we go, they don't. But we have one simple way of making them respawn, and that is under get ISM points. After we pass the ISM points in, we can clear this graph. So we'll pass this point data into the PCG and then start generating a new set of point data. And the next time it refreshes, it will do the same thing. Compile, save, right click, play, and delete a few of these, jump. And that's locked in the current batch. So let's delete a few more, jump, and it's respawned. Jump, and the second batch is respawned. So there we go, now we have two waves of respawning trees. Let's add a timer. Back in BP tree spawner. In event begin play, I'm going to call set timer by event. And the event, I guess I didn't want to do it that way. The event is going to be create event respawn trees. And the time, let's make a new variable for this. Float. Make it visible. I'll call it respawn time. And let's make it in minutes. So respawn time parentheses m. 
We'll take respawn time minutes, and this time is in seconds. So I'll multiply this by 60, and plug that into time. And that should be all we need. Let's go ahead and set a default value on this of, let's say, 20 minutes. But under this instance, let's make it a lot shorter so we can actually test it. So instead of 20, let's do one minute divided by, let's say, 60 seconds. So that'll give us one second timer. No, let's do one minute divided by 10 seconds. So every six seconds, a tree should respawn. So if I remove these, six seconds will go by, and then these trees will lock in, and then six more seconds, and they'll respawn. So 12 seconds, and we should see some trees respawning. And we don't seem to see any trees respawning. Ah, we need to set looping on this so that it goes off more than once. So the trees respawned once, they locked in, but they didn't keep respawning. So let's try this again. Right click play. Delete a few, and then delete a few more. And pretty soon we should see the trees respawning. There's the first set. And in three or so more seconds, there's the second set. So there we go. We have trees respawning on a configurable timer, and they will never respawn instantly after being removed. Next time I'll show you how to randomize the trees respawn locations.